Goitrogens consist of foods, chemicals, and other substances that inhibit the function of the thyroid gland. The main focus of this video is going to be on goitrogenic foods and the impact they have on thyroid health, specifically with regards to people with hypothyroidism, although at the end of this video I will briefly talk about their effects on people with a hyperthyroid condition. Here are 12 goitrogenic foods people with hypothyroidism should avoid. First there's broccoli. Second, Brussels sprouts. Third is cabbage. Four, cauliflower. Five is kale. Six, mustard greens. Seven, peaches. Eight, peanuts. Nine, radishes. Ten, soy-based foods. Eleven, spinach. And twelve, strawberries. There are other goitrogenic foods besides the ones I listed, but these are some of the more common ones. And by the way, not all of these have the same level of goitrogenic activity, meaning that some of these foods are mildly goitrogenic, while others aren't so mild. For example, peaches, strawberries, and spinach are considered by most sources to be mildly goitrogenic. So for someone with hypothyroidism, they won't have the same impact on the thyroid gland as cruciferous vegetables, such as broccoli and Brussels sprouts. Now this doesn't mean that someone with hypothyroidism can safely consume the mildly goitrogenic foods. Anyone with a hypothyroid condition needs to be cautious about consuming too many goitrogens. But does this mean that people with hypothyroidism should completely avoid eating goitrogenic foods? Not necessarily, although anyone with hypothyroidism should at the very least try to minimize the number of these foods they consume on a daily basis. However, whenever one of my patients begins a natural thyroid treatment protocol in an attempt to restore the health back to normal, I do recommend that they refrain from eating any goitrogenic foods for at least the first 21 to 30 days of the program, and sometimes for the first few months after starting such a protocol. Fortunately, most people don't have huge cravings for Brussels sprouts, cabbage, and kale, although it can be more challenging getting someone to stop eating other goitrogenic foods such as peanuts, strawberries, and soy, even if it's only on a temporary basis. Speaking of soy, this is definitely one goitrogenic food that not only should be avoided with people with hypothyroidism, but it also is important for people who don't have a thyroid condition to minimize their consumption of soy. Although the soy industry has done a marvelous job of marketing soy as being healthy for us, many people are allergic to soy and overall soy can lead to a number of health issues. This doesn't mean that people without a thyroid condition should completely eliminate soy from their diets, but soy should be eaten in moderation. The way goitrogens inhibit the function of the thyroid gland is by interfering with iodine metabolism. Iodine is important for the formation of thyroid hormone, so by inhibiting iodine there will be a decrease in thyroid hormone. For someone who doesn't have a thyroid condition this usually isn't a big deal as the body does a great job of adapting and as long as the person isn't consuming too many goitrogens then they should be fine. On the other hand for someone who already has hypothyroidism this should make sense why they would want to avoid consuming goitrogenic foods. Since people with a hypothyroid condition already have problems manufacturing enough thyroid hormone on their own, the last thing they'll want to do is eat foods that will further suppress the production of thyroid hormone. But this is exactly what many people do, as they unknowingly consume many of these thyroid inhibiting foods on a daily basis. But what if someone with hypothyroidism is taking synthetic or natural thyroid hormone? Can these people eat goitrogenic foods since they're not relying on their thyroid gland to produce thyroid hormone? If this describes you and if you have no intentions of restoring the function of your thyroid gland back to normal through natural thyroid treatment methods, then consuming goitrogens in moderation isn't going to harm you. And just to be clear, those people who have gone through a natural thyroid treatment protocol and restored the health back to normal can eat some goitrogenic foods occasionally. So I'm not suggesting that someone with hypothyroidism who decides to follow a natural treatment protocol can never eat goitrogenic foods again because this usually isn't the case. Some people with hyperthyroidism actually use goitrogenic foods as a way to manage their symptoms. After all, since hyperthyroidism involves an excess production of thyroid hormone, it might, ma might make sense to eat these foods in order to naturally manage this condition. While consuming goitrogenic foods might be better than taking antithyroid drugs or receiving radioactive iodine, I personally don't recommend that my patients intentionally take these foods as a way of managing their symptoms, 
especially since natural thyroid treatment methods are so effective in restoring the health of people with hyperthyroidism. I'm proof of this as I had Graves' disease and restored my health by following a natural treatment protocol, which by the way did not include increasing the amount of goitrogens I consume. With that being said, I don't have the same restrictions for patients with hyperthyroidism who are following a natural thyroid treatment protocol as I do with my patients with hypothyroidism. In other words, while I don't encourage my patients with hyperthyroidism to increase their consumption of goitrogenic foods, at the same time I don't tell them to avoid these foods as I do with my hypothyroid patients in the initial phases of such a protocol. In summary, people with hypothyroidism definitely need to be more cautious of these goitrogenic foods than people with hyperthyroidism. And when following a natural thyroid treatment protocol, someone with hypothyroidism should ideally avoid these foods for at least the first 21 to 30 days, and in some cases longer. For those who have hyperthyroidism or no thyroid condition, feel free to eat these foods in moderation. To receive more natural thyroid health tips, please visit naturalendocrinesolutions.com where you can get a free guide entitled The Six Steps on How to Treat Your Thyroid Condition Naturally. This guide contains 100% pure content and is not a sales pitch for any product or service. Thanks for watching this presentation.